Okay, Mr. Chairman, we are live. Uh, we are all set. Thank you, Teresa. I want to welcome everyone who may be joining us um, via Zoom or phone. Um, and welcome the commissioners and the staff from the town to the September 2nd, 2020 Planning Commission meeting for the town of Hilton Head Island. Teresa, are we in compliance with FOIA? Yes, sir, we are. And would you please call the roll? Yes. Mr. Perry? Here. Mr. Stevens? Here. Ms. McGowan? Here. Mr. O'Neill? Here. Mr. Scanlon? Here. <laughs> Mr. Alfred? Here. Mr. Theodore? Here. Mr. Christian? Here. All right, the next item on our agenda is approval of our approval of our agenda. Uh, the staff have any changes to our agenda, Teresa? No, sir. Okay, can I have a motion to approve the agenda from among the commissioners? So moved. Okay, Stephen and I have Leslie as a second. And commissioners, if you have any suggested changes to the agenda when Teresa calls the roll, um, if you approve of the agenda, say aye. If you have a suggested change, please announce it at that time. Teresa, would you please call the roll? Yes, sir. Mr. Perry? Approve. Mr. Stevens? Approve. Ms. McGowan? Approve. Mr. O'Neill? Approve. Mr. Scanlon? Approve. Mr. Alfred? Approve. Mr. Theodore? Approved. Mr. Christian? Approved. And we have minutes on our agenda. However, we are holding those to the next meeting. We have no unfinished business. Our new business is a re recommendation of the proposed CIP fiscal year 2021 priority projects to the town council. And this will be a recommendation by the planning commission um, to the town council. And Scott Leggett provides the staff support um, for that particular function. Um, the CIP committee, and I believe Todd Theodore chairs that particular subcommittee of the town council. Scott, would you like to make a presentation? Uh, yes, sir, I'm happy to do that. And with your indulgence, though, before I get into my remarks, I'm happy to yield the floor to the committee chairman if there are any introductory remarks that he would care to make. Todd, anything to add? No, not really. I just said um, before the pandemic hit, I think we had some great um, public input meetings. And um, I think, as Scott said earlier, that I think we were one of the last public meetings before uh, things began to shut down. So it's great to uh, see this thing pick back up again. Scott, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to you and the rest of, of uh, the commission. Included in your package are simply two documents, the cover memo that were, uh, where I attempted to um, relay some of the process and procedures um, that brings us here to today's discussion, along with the single page priority listing of proposed projects that has emanated from the CIP committee. If there are any process or procedure type questions, I'm happy to answer those. Also, one of the things that I don't believe I commented on from a housekeeping standpoint um, that's contained there towards the end of that memo is the simple fact that four projects that have been identified previously by the commission as being priority projects and that have in fact been funded, um, there really is not a need for the commission to re-identify those projects the convention here internally with the town is that once these projects are funded by council, we will run them to completion. And so there isn't a need to revisit things, for instance, like the Low Country Celebration Park, which not, is not yet complete, but fully funded and will be completed here soon. Same for uh, Fire Station Number 2 in Sea Pines, and there are a list of other projects there at the end of that <laughs> memo that I would draw your attention to. So we don't need to, to spend time with that. What I am prepared to do today, and I can share my screen here in a little bit for ease of, of viewing on uh, the part of the commission and from the public that may be viewing, what I'm most prepared today to do is literally run through the list of proposed projects broken down by category. And as I often do during this presentation, I would invite the commissioners to take a look at these lists 
can simply ask the question, are there things on this list that should not be? And are there projects that are not identified that should be? And if we answer yes to one of those questions, then we need to identify how and where a project like that may be inserted or how and where uh, projects may be de-emphasized and removed from the list. Um, I would reiterate what the committee chairman had made mention of. I thought we had a couple of very good meetings, lots of, of public input, staff input to uh, arrive at this list. And uh, if there are no questions before we get into the list, I'm prepared to share my screen here and we can uh, literally start running through the, uh, the project categories and the projects that are identified. Any questions for Scott among the commissioners? Well, Scott, let's proceed. Okay, is, is that uh, list showing up on everybody's screen? That's affirmative. Yes. Okay, and we'll start like we typically do with this pathway category, and I think that you all will see what are probably uh, some relatively familiar projects Given uh, what has occurred in the past uh, with our ability to fund these, the project category is led by what's identified as Pathways Excel Accessibility and Safety Enhancement Projects, which is really meant to be a, a programmatic type element, a suite of, of uh, localized small scale improvements that staff historically working with the Bicycle Advisory Committee will endeavor to do. It, it uh, boils down to things like uh, signage, pavement markings, maybe small scale pavement connections, but uh, it is not uh, the whole scale construction of new pathway segments. It's something that uh, is relatively recent, let's say, perhaps within the last five years was an addition to the program and is something that we would, would recommend uh, be identified for priority treatment. Project number two, um, is the potential continuation of the town's crosswalk lighting initiative. I can report here to the commission that the uh, proposed uh, lighting project at Yacht Cove, which uh, has been a significant point of discussion the last couple of years, has in fact been completed and uh, went live here with power on uh, two weeks ago Friday. And so we now are in the process of uh, assessing that completed work receiving um, public input regarding uh, the completion of that project. And if so directed by council to advance this initiative, basically turn the pilot project into something more programmatic, um, what staff would recommend be done and what the committee endorses is uh, taking a look at the William Hilton Parkway, Pemetta Parkway area, the Oaks there on the, the north end, roughly between Matthews Drive and Beach City Road as an area uh, of focus for this initiative. And I would also tell you or draw attention to this pathway um, project and uh, one of the roadway improvement initiatives that we'll get to here in a little bit. Um, Main Street Pathway. Again, this has been a project uh, that's been discussed in prior years, but we've been unable to advance it either from a funding standpoint or more importantly, a property owner standpoint. I believe you all are aware that Main Street itself, at least that portion of it, between Hooping Crane Way and Wilborn Road remains in private ownership. I can report that discussions uh, are, are active, I would describe, between the road owner and uh, town council, and presumably with the successful public dedication of that road, um, the potential for a Main Street pathway uh, comes to light. And again, this project is linked to uh, one of the roadway projects listed below. Uh, but again, something that was thought to be uh, important in a priority of staff and the committee. The next two projects, I'd, uh, projects four and five, um, relate to the uh, established <clears throat> initiative of the town, which is long term to provide pathways along both sides of William Hilton Parkway. Um, in general, the town's initial program back from 30 plus years ago uh, focused on the completion of a pathway along the westbound lanes, and we've been working here in recent years to provide a pathway along the eastbound lanes. And so projects four and five uh, would essentially let us uh, fill some gaps that exist um, on the, the eastbound side of the highway and some <laughs> projects that we'd spend a little bit of time with here a few years back uh, that were cut off uh, due to inavailability of funding, but we would like to uh, um, uh, return to those areas and uh, projects six, seven, and eight, I think are as described 
uh, seven and eight uh, relate to improvements that were identified as part of the circle to circle initiative that have not yet been uh, been funded and the Shelter Cove Lane project number six uh, as proposed would provide a pathway connection there at the southernmost Shelter Cove Lane intersection to the, uh, the Shelter Cove Community Park. And so that's the, the summary of the eight projects that presented themselves. I'm happy uh, as we go through category by category, uh, I would, would recommend and suggest that, uh, that we take questions by category rather than hold them to the end. And so I'm happy uh, to answer any questions if there are any regarding the pathway components as proposed. Any questions among the commissioners? Um, I have a question. Please, LeVar. Um, you had mentioned the uh, Whooping Crane uh, Road. You said that's uh, there's some discussion going on with that. Um, you know any more about how, how that's progressing and what your thoughts are about uh, that project? That it... With, yeah, it was related to the Main Street pathway and the potential public dedication of that private road to the town. The discussions of late have mostly focused on the fact that that road in its current state is deficient. Uh, the day after the town acquires that road, if we do so, there is going to be, in my opinion, an immediate need for us to at least address some immediate maintenance, if not a larger scale project of deferred maintenance to bring that road up to uh, what I would say are uh, town standards. And so the discussions to this point largely have been focused on, uh, from a, a standpoint of financial fairness, um, how much um, may the town unburden the current road owner from those financial obligations, and what is the willingness of the current road owner to at least uh, assist in some form or fashion with that endeavor. There was some concern that we, we um, may not want to take on a, a large scale um, financial commitment as, as taking on that road would be. And so we're trying to strike a deal, uh, if that answers the question. And, and LaVarne, from a, I, I can give you a little bit more background. Um, that particular road has been an issue um, for some 20 years yeah. now. And yeah. the, the main issue is, as Scott indicated, um, it is in very poor condition maintenance-wise. And does the town take over a road that is deficient um, without any type of, you know, monetary support from those who currently own the road? Um, the, the, the other issue is that that road serves as a pathway for a multitude of youngsters who access the um, Hilton Head campus of schools. And yeah. they come from a variety of locations, in, including Hilton Head Plantation. And there is not a sole pathway that runs the entire length of that road, which is a safety concern. So those two are intricately tied together, and we would hope that sometime in the future, the uh, private owner of that road, um, which is a group of business owners, um, will uh, work a deal that is uh, amenable to the town and fair to the town, uh, take the road over so that we can get that road into some type of standard and also um, develop a pathway along there for the safety of the youngsters um, accessing that school campus. Yeah, I just wanted to reemphasize that and th thank you for pointing that out. I know it is a, a, a safety concern and I travel that road quite often as well. And it's always, uh, you have to look out for folks that are walking uh, or even biking down that road. So yes, it is a major safety concern. I hope that the town will be progressive and aggressive in trying to strike that deal and. Uh, that we keep that in front of us. And in fairness to the arguments being put forth by the private road owner, the public has enjoyed free and unfettered access to the use of that pro private road um, without uh, expending any dollars for maintenance. Heretofore, all of the maintenance has been borne by the, the private road owners. And so from their standpoint, um, is there any consideration for that fact? And I am hopeful that, that we'll be able to reach a deal um, both from a fairness standpoint that both sides from the, uh, the point of the town council and the road owner believe they've got a fair deal that's in the best interest of the general public. And that's where I think we're trying to drive this one too. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that question, LeVar. 
Any other questions from the commissioners? Otherwise, we'll, we'll have Scott move on to the next segment. Uh, next segment being roadway improvements, and there may not be much more to discuss here with Main Street, uh, but from the town's staff perspective, the roadway improvements and the pathway conceivably can and should be linked. There is a fair amount of work that we expect to be necessary if that road does become uh, publicly owned from a, uh, pay, a structural pavement deficiency standpoint, curb and gutter, drainage, as we typically try to do and per council policy, construct pathways along any of our roadway improvements. So, so we would endeavor uh, to, to piece those together um, in a complementary way, but they did rise to the uh, the number one position in our roadway improvements. Of course, all of this predicated on this successful public dedication. Project number two is uh, the last of our programmatic improvements to replace the span wire traffic signal installations uh, here on the island with the more decorative mast arm uh, traffic signal uh, uh, signals. Uh, and so that's what we would start on. We just completed uh, the work. I think you all are familiar there in Shelter Cove. And so this would let us get on with that last of the, uh, the installations and uh, cross that program off the list altogether. Uh, number three, um, and this is a, a relatively new discussion, although as we stepped back and what the committee seemed re receptive to discussing over the years, the town has had a variety of individual um, initiatives within this corridor that we would frame as roughly being from automobile place there on the north end to Dillon Road uh, there on the south end. And these initiatives um, have run the gamut from median and uh, median improvements, turn lane improvements. We talked about uh, crosswalk lighting improvements. Uh, the town as a relatively recent initiative has purchased the modern classic motor site and working with the DOT and the county is endeavoring to have what we believe is excess right of way uh, relinquished to the town for the purposes of being combined with that property in a strategic way so that we can then turn around and, and market it and uh, ideally sell it uh, to be developed here going forward. And so the thinking being identifying a project corridor bound by those two roadway intersections, uh, looking to make crosswalk improvements, pathway improvements, uh, lighting, signage and the like. And so this was a, would be a project if funded that would allow us to embark on that endeavor. Uh, projects number four and five have emerged um, really as part of the observations that have gone on as part of our annual traffic report. The deficiencies that they would correct, however, um, really haven't and probably wouldn't rise to the level of an overall intersection operational deficiency and really fall more into uh, what I would say is a, a good or proper idea to advance. And they involve uh, the construction in number four of an additional or, or a right turn lane, I guess I should say, at the Arrow Road, Palmetto Bay Road um, intersection where we currently don't have one. And project number five would be a series of localized turn lane extensions at Wilborn Road, um, access serving the school campus in both directions, at Pembroke Drive and at Matthews Drive North, where we can see folks literally driving off the road to access the turn lanes, indicating that we either need to lengthen the turn lane um, or work to better control those vehicles. And so that's what is meant by projects four and five. Questions for Scott on the roadway improvement category. Okay, hearing none, Scott, park development. Park development, um, we pretty quickly get into within this category, what I would suggest could be the keystone projects of the whole program for the upcoming year, as well as setting the stage for the same sort of designation through the next many several years. Uh, Chaplin Linear Park, number one, you all may recall is the last specific project that was identified and linked to the town's tax increment financing district that we embarked on here in 1999. And so with the conclusion of Low Country Celebration Park, what staff and the committee is recommending is that we focus our attentions uh, and uh, fully develop the Chaplin Linear Park concept from the various ideas that have circulated, making this a priority because the uh, TIF uh, funding uh, has an expiration date of 2024. So another four years, we need to have committed the funds that we envision spending for that project. 
So we've got some work to do here, similar, similarly to what has to occur on two, three, and four, to put the puzzle pieces together, confirm what elements would be part of that project as we envision it, and advance it uh, through concept, through design, through permitting, and to construction. And um, for the benefit of those that may be uh, viewing, the notion of this uh, property would be to serve as a functional bookend to the Shelter Cove Community Park um, with the development of a facility there um, on what we call the peninsula of land between Chaplin Community Park and the beach uh, to provide potential uh, you know, trailhead type access, uh, beach access, uh, bathroom buildings, perhaps some other facilities, and then a physical pathway connection between that bookend and Shelter Cove Park. And of course, we would have pathway uh, connections along the creek side of William Hilton Parkway, as well as a crossing of the highway to have planned as part of that. Projects two, three, and four are all running a, a similar track in that each of them was identified as part of our recently completed Parks and Rec Master Plan. Uh, pretty significant um, uh, happenings identified for all of them. Uh, in the Mid-Island uh, track, for those that uh, may be unfamiliar, uh, this is the, the Port Royal property, the golf course property, as it was previously called. Um, in each instance, these large-scale properties have been identified for some level of improvement. Um, and, and what the, the priority position would allow us to do is to advance the concept and the planning, uh, determining what elements could go where in keeping with the recommendations of that master plan. And so each of these uh, potentially leads to uh, projects um, measured in the millions of dollars in the future. And this is something that we would uh, desire very much so to, uh, to get on with that early on concept development and planning. Uh, project number five is, is something that has emerged um, from <clears throat> Parks and Rec Commission. Smaller scale improvements uh, thought to be necessary or beneficial at our uh, various uh, recreational uh, facilities. And you can see uh, as listed here, um, additional picnic shelter at our Barker Field extension and some playground work, uh, namely this poured in surface that is the new standard for how best to treat playgrounds. And then we have uh, some neighborhood scale parks that are identified there at six and seven, along with uh, the capital uh, project support of the Island Rec Association. But I'm happy to answer any questions regarding the park development category, these specific ones. But this is, I, I do need to reinforce for, for y'all's understanding that one through four are thought to be very, uh, very important initiatives of the town. And Scott, Item six and seven, for those who may be listening in and the commissioners who may not be familiar, Taylor Family Property Park and Patterson Family Property Park, could you put a little bit more flesh on the bones with those two? Oh, sure, absolutely. These are both envisioned as smaller scale neighborhood type parks that have emerged as part of the town's community development block grant program. The Taylor Family Property is located on Wild Horse Road and the Patterson family uh, property is located on Marshland Road. But again, small, state, small scale uh, neighborhood uh, type amenities uh, envisioned at both of those. Are they so named for the families who have donated space for these particular recreational facilities? Yes, they, they uh, relate to the historic ownership of the properties. Any other questions from among the commissioners? Yeah, real, real quick, um, Scott, you know, I just want to make certain that as, uh, or, or ask if y'all are thinking, that on three and four, um, I'm sorry, uh, two, and, two <clears throat> and three, that the planning goes hand in hand so that when development does come around, a, re a renovation of Chaplin, that we have additional facilities in place. So you know, with the Mid-Island Track Master Planning, uh, we want to make certain that, that maybe it's moving forward prior to a renovation so that we don't, we don't have downtime. So we're not losing access to fields and, and, and those assets. Yeah, absolutely concur. We, we cannot stand the notion of taking all three of these facilities offline simultaneously. And so um, trying to identify what the elements to occur at each park is important, but so too then is the sequencing. Once we decide what it is that we would endeavor to do, how you go about doing that so we don't cut the community off at its knees um, and force programs to either take a hiatus or not exist uh, while that construction is going on. I agree 100%. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that because that is, it's always, 
uh, been an issue uh, with the limited number of spaces that we do currently have. Navarne, did you have your hand up as well? I did. <clears throat> Please proceed. I, I had a couple of questions on the uh, Chaplain Linear Park. Uh, you had mentioned that on the uh, Marsh side of Highway 278, as I recall, there was uh, some challenges with some of the uh, residents that live along that, that stretch of highway. Uh, Scott, can you remind me of how we are dealing with the, the property owners there? Because there's not a whole lot of uh, land to work with there as far as the, uh, the sidewalk or the pathway goes. Right, I would Am suggest I to you that the discussions are ongoing or will be, but you're correct that uh, you know, it feels like we're threading a needle a little bit because of the constraints that we have on both sides as we attempt to cross that private property. The town does envision, I think, a, a, a bridge or some structure crossing the little inlet there of, of Broad Creek and then across the, the town's property. But as I understand it, we have not yet made a determination uh, working with those affected private property owners how best to cross uh, or secure easements across those pieces of land like we um, I would expect to. So there's work, work still to be done in that regard. I'm not able to identify a specific alignment that we will pursue, but that will emerge as part of uh, the concept development for that project. Yeah, just very sensitive about that, that area there. I know that was a part of the discussion and from a safety standpoint, as well as how it's going to impact the property uh, property owners along that stretch of, uh, of, of highway. Right. Uh, right, like always, it seems like there are competing interests, I think, because from uh, one perspective, the, the safety perspective, it would be beneficial to have the pathway located, relatively speaking, as distant from the highway as we can, so that pathway users don't feel as though they're literally riding right beside the, the traffic moving at 40 and 50 miles an hour, but also not being so heavy handed that the pathway then uh, encroaches or is placed on that private property to where that's thought to be problematic. Yes. Uh, of course, over the period of time, the Highway 278 used to be a two-lane dirt road, but it is kind of, as uh, we progressed, it, it encroaches even more on some of those property owners there. So just trying to be sensitive to that as well. Yes, sir. Uh, the, other, the other question that I had was uh, the exact location of that Taylor family park. You said that's on Wild Horse Road. Can you tell me exactly where that is? Yeah, if you uh, head, uh, let's say, south on Wild Horse, turn on to Wild Horse uh, from Gumtree Road. Um, mm -hmm. I doubt it's a quarter of a mile down that road on the left. The town long uh -huh. ago placed a brick a monument on the property. Right. When it was acquired back in the 90s, it had a life estate on that property, which I understand mm -hmm. has uh, expired. Um, and so, but that's where the property is, that there is a, a brick monument there that's prominently featured on that property now. Yeah, and I know that's a, another sensitive area as far as uh, the history and uh, the, uh, the Native Islanders. Isn't there some, wasn't there like uh, cemeteries or some markings there as well? I'm not aware of that detail. There could be, but I'm, I'm not aware of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, LeVarne. Michael? Yes, uh, Scott, I got a question. Uh, the commission has been uh, recently uh, warned that uh, we do not have enough publicly accessible pickleball sites. And uh, I wondered if in the discussions on any of these parks, we are looking at that sort of development for the future to provide some public pickleball sites. Uh, yes, in capital letters. <laughs> well, well, can you tell me where? Um, I, I think right now what has emerged, and of course this is where we'll get into the, the detail as these project advances. As I understand it, the Chaplin Park renovation, in part because of the fact that we have uh, racket sports that, that are there now, I think the, the thinking as part of that master plan work is that we could conceivably have a pickleball facility there to complement that. Uh, similarly, what has, seems to have emerged from the master plan is a desire to consolidate our uh, uh, bat and ball activities, uh, softball, baseball, little league uh, at Crossings Park. And so you, you essentially seem to have a coagulation of uses 
with the racket sports potentially emerging there, uh, Mid-Island and the stick and ball sports emerging or uh, being reinforced down at Crossings Park. Some of, my previous, some of my previous statements uh, have been misconstrued that I am against pickleball, which I am not. But I just think, it, you know, it's got to be put in its proper place priority-wise. But I just wanted to make sure for my pickleball friends out there that there are some places where in the future we might solve some of their problems. Yes, I, I would fully expect that a facility of some note is going to uh, be identified to occur, whether it is at Chaplin or, or a different location. Um, but yeah, it was prominently featured uh, in the public input and the, the Parks and Rec master plan as far as a, a need that the town should endeavor to, uh, to address. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you for that question, Michael. Any other questions from among the commissioners? Thank you, Scott. Hey, we hey, move on Peter, to the next category. I'm I'm sorry, Todd. Um, Scott, this may be a detail um, on the Chaplin Linear Park um, there, where that uh, creek crossing is. It seems to be a popular place for fishing. Uh, it would be good to make sure that whatever happens there um, accommodates that um, fishing access. Yes, sir. I agree, and we do have plans in the short term. <clears throat> you may remember the, the so-called Shelter Cove pathway extension and parking. There is a, a complementary piece of this that we're working on right now uh, for uh, parking and better pathway connection uh, towards the Shelter Cove Community Park right now. But I agree, and that's been mentioned as well, the desire to, uh, to uh, provide better water access there um, as part of our, our work. Okay, good deal. Thank you. Okay, be before I move on to the next category, anyone else uh, on park development? Uh, one, one other quick question. <clears throat> I recall seeing something, Scott, uh, here more recently about handicap access to our beaches. Is that something that's on your radar as you develop these parks and uh, certainly the beach access? I'm aware of the discussion that took place last week and it has, has occurred so recently that I, I guess I'm still uh, looking and expecting information to make its way to me. As I understand it, uh, that particular aspect didn't emerge as part of our own Parks and Rec master plan. And so, uh, yeah, we would have to, uh, to look as to how best to insert that in the program. But I think it's still so new and fresh that we just haven't had a chance for reality to catch up with that idea and that endeavor. Yeah, I, yeah, I apologize. I think it was in relation to the uh, Islander Beach Park, but anyway, all of the uh, beach accesses may have that in their consider consideration as you move along comprehensively. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that question, LeBarn. Scott, existing facilities and infrastructure. Um, yeah, just a couple of projects here. Um, number one, as identified back in March by the committee and by staff, was envisioned to be really two things. One a remodeling of the current town council chamber, which has remained unchanged since we moved in here uh, to the current town hall in 1992. And so there was thinking there that we can or should refresh things with respect to that meeting room. And at the time, we also had talked about enhancing some physical security features here of town hall. And since then, that discussion has also morphed into uh, what I would describe as health safety features, screenings and that sort of thing that are ongoing now down here daily. And so that program uh, may choose to morph a little bit to include uh, not just physical security, but a, a health safety piece um, of the, the remodeling and rework here at Town Hall. Um, number two relates to the arts campus renovation. And this is the project that uh, you may recall is thought to be a joint endeavor between the town and the University of South Carolina, Beaufort. Um, although their uh, operating environment has changed just like the town does in response to the pandemic, what we would like to much uh, similar to the way we intend to pursue the park work we described is to engage in the facility master planning and concept development there with the presumption that we may be able to strike a deal with the university. So again, something that we're looking to advance sooner rather than later, just so that we can develop those concepts and ideas and get a game plan in place uh, going forward. 
questions among the commissioners on existing facilities and infrastructure? Todd? Um, Scott, where is the um, arts campus area? It would, it would be, and it, it, apologize for the description, it would be at the current um, arts center as we know it. Okay. And so the, the question becomes in the, the future scenario, what can or could be contained on that campus or that, that property? Okay. What would the elements be at that property? It may be something a little bit different than the, the facility that we have now. There may be some uh, additional um, work, and that's what we would need to look into. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Scott on existing facilities and infrastructure? Thank you. Scott, new facilities. Uh, new facilities. This is a recurring initiative that emerged um, during our partnership project with the uh, Hilton Head Public Service District for their sewer expansion and working with our fire rescue folks, there were some gaps uh, that we would prefer to be lessened. Um, and so with the PSD, well, we've got a cooperative project where we each are, are uh, matching funds. Um, and what we would endeavor to do is continue with that program, allowing us to uh, coordinate and provide uh, additional fire hydrants where they thought uh, may thought to be beneficial for the fire service. I don't want to leave anybody with the impression that uh, somebody is without service because that is not the case. This is all about uh, trying to make the service that we have better. Question for Scott on the fire hydrant expansion projects. Uh, not so much a question, just a, a comment. And uh, I'm glad to see that we're moving this project along. And it certainly came up in the discussion with our uh, HE task force. And the, uh, I think there was a discussion about the property owners having to sign some sort of waiver if they were not uh, within a certain uh, uh, distance from, a, um, from the fire hydrants. Um, are you aware of that, Scott, as you move along with this project? I am aware of that, and I think that the town's position may have uh, changed uh, from that early position, but I am aware of those active discussions between the fire marshal's office and uh, the, the landowners, the developers, the folks that are looking at, to those activities as you describe it. I'm not aware that there is uh, an existing conflict or concern, but I am aware of those discussions. Yeah, I, I would uh, certainly give the town and the, the uh, fire uh, uh, department, fire chief, of course, some kudos in trying to uh, mitigate that and negotiate that and have a clear understanding of that. So I hope we continue to make progress with that. Thank you for that question, LeVarn. Any other questions on new facilities? Our final category, beach maintenance. Yeah, beach maintenance. Uh, one of these that is somewhat mundane, the other is uh, is the exact opposite. Uh, number one is the continuation of our semi-annual monitoring uh, the physical monitoring, the aerial photography, the annual reports that we generate to judge the condition of our beach, given that we're now you know, three years or so here since the last project. And so we would uh, endeavor to continue on that work. The other one, uh, number two, that I need to put on the radar here organizationally is the potential uh, for the next large scale Beachville project to occur here somewhere around 2025. And what we would like to do uh, with funding in place is embark on the, the offshore work that is necessary to um, identify suitable sand sources offshore here of Hilton Head. It would be something that I would envision from a time, uh, time frame standpoint, not commencing until later on in the fiscal year. And this is the time that we get to work in relative anonymity with respect to the project but it is something just from a timing standpoint, we would expect to uh, be in a position here roughly five years to uh, construct our next project and we need to start that work um, soon. Questions for Scott on beach maintenance. Probably one of the biggest or the biggest project that we undertake on a regular basis. Scott, what, what was the, the, le the cost of the last beach renourishment which was probably right after Hurricane Matthew. Yeah, when you roll in um, the project that was underway um, when Matthew occurred, the repair work from Matthew, and then the Irma uh, project, all told 2016 through 2017, we spent about $32 million 
uh, to rebuild the beaches both as planned as part of our regular uh, scheduled work as well as uh, or in addition to the, the storm damage repair. And there is roughly speaking about $5 million or so of, of damage as we see it that we um, were unable to repair that we would like to as part of this next project. And thus far our discussions with FEMA, uh, that, uh, that work is still in play for as far as the town reimbursement goes. That, that is you know, by far our, our largest asset besides our, our people are our beaches. So important projects. Other questions for Scott on beach maintenance? Okay, hearing none, um, we do have two citizens that have signed up to provide public comments. And this was uh, open at the town hall portal and we'll now invite those callers um, to chime in and each will have three minutes apiece. Our first citizen is Heather Rath. And Heather, are you on the line? Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, sorry, Peter, there's a little bit of a delay. Uh, I just wanted to say to everybody, thank you for your support of the Bicycle Advisory um, Committee project. Thank you for Scott for all of his hard work and thank you for your support, your continued support of Main Street getting that road um, turned over to the town in a fair manner and in a quick manner is important to the safety of everybody. So um, thank you very much for your support. Well, thank you for your comment, Heather. We appreciate your participation and all your hard work on the Park and Rec Committee. All right, and thank the, you. The second caller we have is Frank Babel. Frank, you have three minutes. Are you on the line, Frank? Okay, well, apparently Frank is not on the line. Um, if he chimes in. Uh, can, you hear, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Frank. Hello? Okay, sorry. Uh, that, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good morning to all the members of the commission. Um, uh, First, uh, we want to, on behalf of the Bike Advisory Committee, thank uh, Scott and the town for, and Todd and you folks for putting together a, uh, a very strong 2021 SIP plan. We, we support it enthusiastically. Um, but before, uh, we, uh, we have a couple of comments. We also want to thank the commission and, and those and the council members that are listening for supporting the Celebration Park Bike Safety and Transportation Projects and especially for the support of the Mid-Island US 278 uh, corridor project. It used to be a real challenge to cross the William Hilton Parkway to get to and from Shelter Cove and the town center, but it's now safe. The new signalized crosswalks and the widened underpass were in heavy use by bikers and pedestrians uh, all summer and uh, gave the safe south end some relief from the very heavy bike traffic. Uh, we, we feel very strongly that this corridor approach is a much more effective way to look at general areas than responding to individual crosswalks or touchy situation intersection problems. And we strongly support town staff's request to do a study similar to the Mid-Island project on the William Hilton Parkway between Automotive Automobile Place and Dillon Road. As we know, this area is filled with curb and median cuts, lots of intersection crosswalk issues, <laughs> Lots of bike car uh, crashes, and unfortunately, we've had two bike and two pedestrian deaths in this area this past decade, so hats off to you folks in advance for doing this. But having said that, we support the installation of crosswalk lighting at the William Hilton Parkway uh, 278 and the Oaks in the 2021 SIP, but it must have a new crosswalk. Regarding the 2021 SIP, we support the projects as presented, especially the Main Street project. But we are concerned that the access and safety funds might be used exclusively to support single crosswalk lighting projects. The access and safety fund was originally established uh, for pathways to support incremental pathways, access and safety issues that the BAC would identify and town staff would support. It's a collaborative effort. We are concerned that these funds could be tied up for years putting in crosswalk lighting when there are lots of other projects that bear consideration in our view. In fact, we would recommend to the town that it undertake a study of lighting for crosswalks, intersections, 
and certain pathways to come up with a plan rather than reacting to difficult situations and treating each crosswalk individually. And lastly, again, we would encourage, and jumping on uh, Heather's comment, we encourage the town to move forward with the Main Street parking, uh, Main Street project. Thank you for consideration and your support, folks. Uh, get ready this weekend. There'll be a lot of people out there, and uh, be safe. Are there any questions? Thank you, Frank, for your, your comments. Always appreciate it. Hearing none, I'll sign off. Now I know how to sign off. Okay, commissioners, we have uh, two rounds of p potential um, discussion. Um, and as we went through this, um, you know, we did have a, a discussion and question period. Um, so don't feel compelled to um, bring up items just for the sake of bringing them up. Um, but we will go through in order uh, and see if anyone has any additional comments um, before we uh, call for a motion um, to possibly move this forward to the, to the town council. So, Commissioner Theodore, any additional comments? No additional comments. Um, just uh, thank you, Scott, for all your hard work and guiding our uh, committee. Yes, sir, you're welcome. Commissioner McGowan, any any comments? Uh, my only comment is um, I was I'm on the subcommittee and we had I had my notes for our meeting in February. Scott has has definitely incorporated all the comments from the committee and from the public into this uh, list of proposed priority projects. And I I have no further comments. Thank you, Commissioner McGowan. Commissioner O'Neill, any further comments? No comments. Commissioner Alford, any further comments? Yes. Uh, I think uh, Scott's presentation was excellent, very helpful, and, and I am certainly uh, very much in agreement with uh, almost everything that is on there. But I did want to raise one possible exception, and that is under pathways, the boggy gut pathway. Uh, I have a question and concern as to whether there is any real significant interest on the part of the biking public uh, for such an additional facilities. Uh, and certainly, I, it doesn't appear to me to uh, come even remotely close to some of the other pathway projects that we have in mind in terms of need uh, or bicycle and pedestrian uh, traffic. So I would uh, like to urge reconsideration of whether the boggy gut, uh, number seven under pathways, should be part of this list. Thank you, Commissioner Alford. Commissioner Perry. Um, <clears throat> I will state that I'm in support of, of these, um, these items to be done. I do want to kind of mirror off of what LeVon said earlier um, regarding Main Street. Uh, it is a very dangerous road and throughout all times of day. You know, we've got a lot of people in the afternoon that are jumping on that road trying to bypass 278. Um, while school's not going into session for several weeks now in person, um, we've got a little bit of time. But, you know, when the kids are back out there, there are a lot of kids on that road. And it is a very, very dangerous intersect or uh, main, main through. And I would love to see a real strong public-private partnership with the owners of the road and the town to make certain that that street uh, gets the attention and the maintenance that it needs, that a, that a pathway that is safe for everyone is provided there. I just think that is a real um, hot spot that we've got. And the last thing we need is to have any accidents there with our children or anybody else. And so it goes right in line with the crosswalk lighting in certain areas um, to make certain that our pedestrians are safe. I strongly urge that. Thank you, Commissioner Perry. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Scanlon. I just want to uh, thank Scott for his uh, detailed presentation and for our public comments from uh, Heather and Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Scanlon. Vice Chairman Stevens, comments? Uh, yeah, just a couple comments. I will echo my colleagues and uh, commending Scott on uh, the work that he's doing and how he presents these projects. It makes it feel like a, a good summer novel. Uh, 
that uh, as we move along, I will just reiterate uh, the consideration for being sensitive to a lot of the areas that uh, may be encroached or how it impacts a lot of the uh, uh, Native Islanders in particular, but just property owners in general. And I uh, know that there's some ongoing discussions and mitigations and things that need to take place. And I just uh, hope we continue to be sensitive to that. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chairman Stevens. And and I would you know continue to echo the comments of my fellow commissioners. Got outstanding job um, developing this. And Todd, uh, you and your your uh, CIP committee um, have done an, a, an awesome job of of working this through. Um, also, wanted to reiterate what's been said before. Um, having Main Street um, right outside Hilton Head Plantation's gate. Um, this has been an ongoing concern for many, many years uh, and a safety concern. And obviously, the safety of those youngsters and the uh, traveling public, um, pedestrian public and cycling public um, needs to be addressed. And hopefully, we can come to a quick resolution and also um, reiterate um, the balance that we have to achieve on putting the additional pathways in and being sensitive to the owners of those properties and making sure that um, those considerations are, are equally met. All right, we have another round of, of questions, but I believe we've gone through this. And what I'd like to do at this time is, is call for a, a motion um, to move this forward. And then as Teresa calls the roll, if there is an additional comment um, with your yay or nay, you can interject it at that time. So. At this time, I'd, I'd ask for a, a motion to move this forward to the town council as a recommendation. And Mike, you had your hand up first to move it. And Stephen, you had your hand up second. You are the second. So we have a motion and a second. And Teresa, would you call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Theodore? Uh, yes, and I would add that um, Main Street um, ought to be a high priority. Ms. McGowan? Yes. Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Mr. Alfred? Uh, yes, but I'd like to add a comment in support of what's been said about uh, Main Street, which I uh, both drive and bike with some frequency and have seen fellow bikers hit potholes and bumps in that road and fall off and get hurt. Um, as, as a uh, matter of how this is to my understanding, going to be approached uh, based on my prior experience at the municipal level and in community associations with private roads. Most communities do not take over private roads unless they are put back into original shape. Uh, financially, my understanding is that the business owners are not able to do that. The dilemma then is uh, allowing the public to continue to use insufficient facilities uh, versus the usual practice that the private property owners would take care of the initial maintenance. So my understanding is that among other things that council is considering uh, is a special tax district, which would permit the property owners to pay some portion of the cost of renovating that street over a period of time. And uh, my understanding is the negotiations are over what portion will be paid over time and what portion forgiven. Thank you. Mr. Perry? Uh, yeah. Mr. Scanlon? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Approve. Mr. Christian? Approve. That would make it unanimous. And I want to thank the commissioners for their thoughtful comments. Thank Scott again for uh, leading us through the discussion um, and thank the public for their participation in the process. Um, Teresa? Would you uh, comment on citizen comments? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Citizens were provided the opportunity to give comments on general planning commission business during the meeting by phone. There were no requests from citizens to speak on general commission business. Thank you, Teresa. And commission business, um, I know, Teresa, we're looking at a joint meeting in October. And if you would remind me of that date, um, that uh, you're going to be sending out for consideration by the commissioners. 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, the October meetings for the commission, we would like to combine those two meetings into one on October 14th at nine o'clock. And Teresa will be sending each of you out an email to check on your availability. So there's no need to discuss it now, but I just wanted to give you a heads up um, that, that that will be forthcoming. Um, Chairman's report, I just wanna thank everyone for their participation. Um, you know, the, the Zoom is impersonal, but it allows us um, to uh, gather from faraway places and the, the attendance has been excellent. Um, and we've been doing a, a lot of work and a lot of catch up work uh, given the pandemic. And I just wanna thank each of the commissioners uh, and the staff uh, for all their support in getting this important work done. And committee reports, um, CIP, I'm, Todd, I'm sure that you're delighted that uh, this has been moved forward, but do you have anything further to add? No, just excited that uh, we finally got approval before the end of the year. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and comp plan, Michael, you also must be delighted because we're moving your project forward. Yes, we are. Uh, the uh, Our plan will be presented at the uh, meeting on the 16th of this month. And uh, Taylor and the town staff have done a remarkable job and the development team and all the people and all the other other teams that have come together have uh, have put together an awful lot of great uh, information. I think, as I said in one of the meetings, we are in the 99th percentile in terms of our plan uh, of things that the town can control. Uh, one a point of personal plug here, Mr. Chairman. Certainly. Uh, Levon said something about Scott's presentation being a good summer novel. I just want you guys to know, especially you, Levon, my book is out now, and so it's a good summer novel also. <laughs> Thank you, uh, uh, Michael. Uh, Gullah Geechee Task Force, Levon, lots of good things coming mm -hmm. out of that, and I, I expect uh, we're going to get some type of a recommendation soon. Uh, yes, we had a very good uh, meeting on ju just yesterday. I'm excited excited to report that we uh, uh, had some progress on the uh, what was being called historic overlay district, and that will be coming up to the LMO committee. And uh, we've got some real uh, progressive and exciting changes in there. And uh, and I also want to say while I'm making my comments that while while I speak a lot of times of representing the uh, the Gullah Geechee culture. Uh, we're very sensitive to the community as a whole and uh, understanding that we're all one community. So it's not that we're trying to do special things for special people, but we're certainly trying to do things to help folks that have been here and preserve the culture that we claim that we love so much. And that so we can uh, uh, have uh, participation from everybody. And uh, as I said in the meeting yesterday, we realize that everybody may not get everything that they want. But I think we came to a good place on yesterday, and uh, Todd is a part of that task force. He's present here, and I'd like to thank him along with the other task force members if they are watching. And of course, staff for their hard work and being willing to kind of step outside of the box and think progressively and be creative and trying to find some solution to some very difficult uh, questions and things that have in my opinion, have been uh, long overdue. But yeah, we've made some great progress, uh, Mr. Chairman, and do the LMO committee can, can expect something coming up from the Gullah Geechee Task Force. Oh. And I'll be looking for that. Uh, Mike, I'll be looking for your book on the New York's uh, bestsellers uh, list. On Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, LaVarne, thank you so much, and thank you for your, for your leadership on that task force. We look forward to their recommendations to the uh, uh, LMO committee and eventually the full commission. Um, Leslie, LMO committee? Yes, the, the committee that never has, has an empty agenda. Um, <laughs> we are looking to schedule two meetings in September to address the Historic Neighborhoods um, Preservation Overlay um, proposals. Um, I don't think we've confirmed those dates yet. They're looking at 9:16 and, and 9:23. Um, so stay tuned for for uh, as we keep moving along. 
And, and Leslie, we thank thank you for your leadership on that committee. And as you said, your your plate is never empty. Never empty. No. <laughs> and, and as we know, LeBarn <laughs> is going to fill it up very, very yeah. quickly again. <laughs> I'm happy to fill it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> and rules and procedures. Alan, anything to report? Uh, nothing to report today. Well, thank you so much. All right, staff report. Um, and do you have anything to share with the commission? No, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, this is Teresa. I have a couple notes to share. Um, as uh, Ms. McGowan said, uh, the LMO committee will be meeting and we have just confirmed that the meetings will be held on September 16th at two o'clock and then again on September 23rd at nine o'clock. And as Commissioner McGowan said, we will be meeting on the historic neighborhoods overlay district. What was the time of the September 16th, uh, Teresa? 2 p.m. 2 p.m., thank yes. you. And also on the 16th, the full commission will be meeting at nine o'clock. Um, Commissioner Scanlon had mentioned that the R plan public hearing will be scheduled for the commission's review and recommendation to town council on that. And, and then uh, Mr. Chairman, as you had mentioned earlier, I will be reaching out to you all later today about the Planning Commission's October meeting. Thank you so much, Teresa, for all your work behind the scenes in keeping us all straight and our meetings straight. Very much appreciated. Mr. Chairman, uh, question for Teresa. Certainly. Uh, right. Teresa, the Planning Commission meeting on the 16th, is that at 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock? I thought I heard you say 9 o'clock. Yes, sir. It, we changed it to 9 o'clock. Okay, and then LML is still at two o'clock then? Yes. All right, fair enough, thank you. Yes, we thought we would change the commission's meeting to nine o'clock. Um, we felt that the LMO committee's uh, meeting at two o'clock, an hour wouldn't be enough time. Fair enough, thank you. Sure. All right. Any other business to come before the commission or any other questions? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion that we adjourn. Thank you all for your hard work. LeVarn, you're up. Alan, you're second. Thank you all for your hard work. Very much appreciated. Thank Take you. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye.